Oh no, friends. Is your favorite fragrance being discontinued? Oh, that's a bummer. I've been there before. How's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to GentSense. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to be talking about fragrance discontinuations. More specifically, how to know or have a better idea if a fragrance that you really love is potentially on the chopping block, which actually happens way more often than you might realize. Even with really big fragrance names and fragrance brands that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So we're really just gonna be talking about uh, different things that sometimes will get people confused when it comes to discontinuations and some of the red flags that I look for if I myself am trying to figure out if I think something is potentially going to be discontinued. Before we jump into this whole rigmarole, here is a bunch of codes. These are discount codes, codes that you can use if you so desire to save between 10 and 20% off your order, depending on the website. Triple Traders has a lot of clones, clone fragrances, not cloned people. And then you know the others, Lucky Scent, Max Aroma, Twisted Lily, Soul Avant Garde, get yourself some niche. We're designers at Max Aroma. So let's start breaking this down. The reason that I decided to do this video is uh, actually because I was searching up Cool Water Parfum. I was looking to see if it was available anywhere because I have noticed here recently that it's been less available. And it brought up a thread, is Cool Water Parfum discontinued? And the general consensus there was, yeah, absolutely. And this is one of the things that I'll talk about more as we go, but these discontinuations will sneak up on you. And before you know it, it's gone, the fragrance is gone. So Cool Water Parfum, you may be like, didn't that just come out? Yeah, yeah, it came out in 2021. And uh, here we are two years later and apparently, which do I need to bring up Lana Weed Alone Blue Electrique? Yeah, maybe we'll bring that up as we go. But anyway, the first thing that you always need to keep in mind when it comes to fragrances, always, is that just because something is popular in the fragrance community, or on Fragrantica, or on YouTube, or TikTok, or wherever, just because a fragrance is popular in the fragrance sphere does not mean that it's actually popular in real life. So what does that mean? Well, a fragrance can get all the hype in the world on social media platforms, on fragrance communities, online, on different forums. None of that matters if the fragrance is not selling in retail stores and selling well. And by that same token, selling well at discounters is not the same thing as selling well at retail stores and on retail websites. People get this confused all the time. And I'm talking about everybody here gets this mixed up, it seems. Well, not you, dear viewer, not you. But they'll think to themselves, oh, well, this is really popular in the community. And people like it on YouTube and they like it on forums. Therefore, it must be popular everywhere. <laughs> That's not the case at all. Again, I've, I've referenced back to this a number of times, but look at the top 20 best-selling fragrances in the US for men last year. I did a two-part video series on that, detailing the exact amount of each fragrance sold, the top 20 best-sellers. If you look at that, a bunch of those fragrances get hated on in the community, and a bunch of fragrances that get lots of love in the community, nowhere to be found in the top 20. So keep that in mind. Dior Homme Intense, for example. I love Dior Homme Intense. I think it's one of the best designer fragrances ever made easily. It's one of the most well-respected designer fragrances ever. And in the United States, it did not really do that well. It got crushed by fragrances like the original Gucci Guilty. If you ask a fragrance person which one of these is better, which one probably sold more, well, they might realize because of the large difference between the two, but a lot of people would think that Dior Homme Intense sold way better than it actually did. So yeah, just because it's selling at discounters for 70% off doesn't mean that a fragrance brand is viewing that in a positive light. If the stock is having to be liquidated to the gray market and sold at a heavy discount, 
That's a bad thing for the brand. That's not a good thing for the brand. They want you to buy it at full retail at Macy's or from their website. So that's very important. Do not conflate popularity in the community with how well it's actually doing. Because I have seen countless times over and over and over and over over the years, since well before I started a YouTube channel, people saying it's not possible that this fragrance is discontinued because this is their number one most popular fragrance. Lo and behold, it's not their most popular fragrance. It's actually underperforming. And then it does get discontinued. And then what happens is all the people who were loudly screaming, it's impossible for it to be discontinued. When everyone realizes, oh, it's discontinued, those people do this. They just pull a Homer Simpson, they back into the hedge and they pretend they never said any of that stuff. So yeah, you gotta think for yourself here. Moving on, brands will not announce a discontinuation 99 times out of 100. So if you're sitting there waiting for them to release some kind of statement saying, hey, we did in fact discontinue that fragrance, you're gonna be waiting a while because they don't do that. They will generally just let the fragrance quietly fade away and then they'll pretend that it never existed. They essentially ghost you is what happens. And as well, emailing or calling a brand's customer service and asking, hey, has this fragrance been discontinued? Is, is not really typically gonna get you all that much information. I know everybody will do that. They'll be like, I'm on top of it, guys. I'm sending an email. You're sending an email to their low level customer service. Like, do you think the CEO is gonna get that and be like, whoa, Joe Blow 246 wants to know if we discontinued this fragrance. We I gotta let them know. Truth be told, most of these brands, when you write them and you ask them, hey, has this been discontinued? They'll just ignore you. I know that sucks, but it is what it is. Most of the time, they, they frankly don't care. So the issue here is even if you get a response from a low level customer service rep, and no offense to them, they're out there grinding, but you email them or call them, they're not the decision makers. They may or may not know what's going on with some random fragrance, which is part of a huge portfolio of their overall business, they may not know it's been discontinued. You know, they're gonna send you a form email one way or the other. Now, to be fair, sometimes you do get a response from a customer service rep and it seems like they know at least kind of what's going on. Again, it's gonna be a form email, but um, most of the time it, it's kind of spinning tires. You know, you send an email, you call them, they don't really know. So while you can use that as like part of the overall case that you're building of could a fragrance be discontinued or not, it's not the end all be all. I have seen in the past where they've said, hey, this fragrance is not discontinued, you're good. And then like two months later, ah, it's literally nowhere. You can't find it anywhere. What happened to it was good, customer service rep. So again, I, I know that that's like what everyone thinks is you just send an email, you're gravy. It doesn't usually work like that because again, they don't really make announcements on these most of the time, they just let the fragrance kind of die off and then they keep it moving. So let's talk about some red flags, some things that you might want to look for if you have a feeling that one of your favorite fragrances is potentially going to be discontinued. I am kind of speaking in generalities here, but the more that you see this happen, if you pay attention, you'll be able to recognize it a lot quicker because it, it follows a similar pattern each time, or at least most of the time. First thing to look out for, the fragrance being removed from the big retailers where it used to be. So we're talking Macy's, Sephora, Ulta, Nordstrom, Saks, all those fragrance stores. If the fragrance in question was available at those stores, and then it starts to go away from those stores, the pages being removed, that is a huge red flag. And just to kind of follow up on that, just because it's still available on some shelves at some of those stores, does not mean that the fragrance is all good. Because they will sell through the stock that they have, they're not just gonna trash every bottle and take a loss. So if the fragrance is discontinued and it's removed from all those websites, but Macy still has a bunch of those fragrance bottles on store shelves, they're gonna sell those first. Once they sell all of them, they're not gonna be able to be replenished because the fragrance is discontinued and that's when you start to see it disappear from shelves as well. So typically it's gonna disappear first from the websites. And the more you think about it, that's kind of common sense, right? If it's being removed from those really big retailers where trust me, these brands, they wanna be moving those bottles and that's the best place to move them. I can say that from experience with my fragrances being sold at Perfumania and the fragrance outlet, which those stores are not on par with like the power that a Macy's or Sephora has. I move like 
I don't even know, 20 times, 30 times, 40 times the fragrances in stores of those than I do online. So I can only imagine when it comes to like these brands, you know, Paco Rabanne, Christian Dior, Versace, stuff like that, how much they're moving in stores. It is huge, big numbers. So they want them there. That's where they're making a big, big old chunk of money. So if it's removed from all those websites, they can no longer make money there. That's a problem. And why would that be? If they're still making the bottles, they're still making the fragrances, they should be on those websites, right? Right. So that's the first red flag and it's a really big one, maybe the biggest one. So very simply, if you have a fragrance that used to be at Sephora, Macy's, Ulta, all these different websites, and then it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. You can't find it on those anymore. It's been removed, that's not good. And just to reiterate once again, just because you can find it on a shelf somewhere does not mean the fragrance is not discontinued. To drive that home, these two, Fahrenheit 32 and Fahrenheit Absolute. After these were discontinued, I could still find these for months and months, even like a year plus after the discontinuation, I could still find these at my local Sephora inside of JCPenney's. That's because they hadn't sold, but they still had a few bottles and they kept them on shelves until they did, even though you couldn't find them really anywhere at that point. Another red flag, if the fragrance brand itself, the house itself, starts breaking or removing or scrubbing links for that fragrance, that's bad. As a recent example, Prada Loam Intense. That fragrance, everybody said, going back to what I said earlier in the video, that's the best fragrance. That's Prada's number one fragrance in that line. They are for sure keeping it. It started getting removed from all the stores and then the links on Prada's own website for Prada Loam Intense were breaking. So where it used to be, you could click and go get information for Prada Loam Intense. You would click it, it would throw up an error. This page doesn't exist. When that starts to happen, that's a big red flag. That means that the brand is going, hey, this fragrance, we're getting ready to gadoosh it. So just go ahead and remove this, remove that. We don't need it anymore. It's a big red flag. And then going back to discounters. If the fragrance was readily available at discounters for a long time, and then it starts to become unavailable. Suddenly it's sold out for months at a time. And then when these discounters do get the fragrance back in, suddenly the price is way higher than it used to be. That's not good. That happened with Midnight in Paris. This fragrance, which thankfully I did buy backups of, and going back to Midnight in Paris, everybody when this was announced it was discontinued was saying, no way, no way. That's always the reaction. I swear to you, it does not matter. The reaction is always, no way, it's impossible. All these other hundreds of fragrances over the years have been discontinued, but this one, no sir, not possible. That's what happened with this. I did buy backups. This was crazy cheap at discounters. 15 bucks, I think, 15, 19, something like that. And then the discontinuation happened. It was still available for a while, but then, ooh, started to sell out. Well, that's, that's weird. And then they would get it back in stock and everyone would go, hey, I told you, it's back in stock again at FragranceNet. It's not discontinued, but now the price is $35. Huh, that's weird. And then this, this kind of repeated a little bit, discontinued, I don't know, sold out, not here, back, a little bit more expensive, and then eventually sold out, gone. Once the stock is gone, the stock is gone. They're not making any more. So always keep that in mind when you hear about a discontinuation and all the red flags are pointing toward, yeah, it's probably discontinued. You will always have people who tell you, nope, not possible never gonna be discontinued, everything is good here. Don't bother to look here, there, or anywhere, it's all good. And they'll point to, uh, it's at this discounter. How could it be for sale at Fragrance Buy if it was discontinued? It's not possible. How could it be on my local shelf over here at Macy's? It's not possible, it's right there. And it may very well take months after a discontinuation, many months, it could take a year or more before that stock really starts to dwindle down. But if it is discontinued, that stock will dwindle down. And when it gets to the point where it's completely gone and every last person realizes, oh, it is discontinued, at that point, guess what? Every last person realizes, oh, it's discontinued. And the price is gonna go whoop. So for me, if it's a fragrance I don't really care about, it's whatever. I mean, fragrances come and go 
all the time. But if it's something that I really like and all the writing is on the wall, even if there are people saying, no, no, no don't worry about it. I like to err on the side of caution again. I'm glad because generally when it comes to fragrances and discontinuations, if there's a lot of smoke, there's fire somewhere. You may not know exactly where it is yet, but by the time everyone sees the fire, it's too late. At that point, the scalpers have got it. The price is jacked. It's completely screwed at that point. So if it's removed from all the big website chain stores, if it's really hard to find at discounters, if the pages for the fragrance itself are being scrubbed from the website, the end is probably not too far away. Look at Aqua de Jo Profumo. Everyone was like, Aqua de Jo Profumo is the number one Aqua de Jo. It's their best seller because it was hugely popular, still is in the fragrance community. But when you look at the actual top 20 best sellers in the US, Profumo was underperforming where Giorgio Armani wanted it to be. So they rework it a little bit, retool it, and Aqua de Jo Parfum, goodbye Aqua de Jo Profumo. You have to be able to read the tea leaves. So if you ignore all of the tea leaves and ignore everything else and you go, I just assume it's all good, then you may miss out on being able to pick up the backup bottle or the first bottle of the fragrance before it's gone. So there we go. That's kind of how I do it when I'm looking for uh, fragrances, whether they're discontinued or not, kind of the things that I look at. And that's not really an end all be all. I mean, there have been fragrances like La Nuit Blue Electrique where it just out of nowhere is gone. That one got <laughs> taken down and scrubbed quick. A lot of times you can see it coming. That one I did not. And so it makes things even more precarious now because something like that could happen. And before you know it, stuff is just with how many fragrances are constantly coming out nowadays and the limited amount of shelf space that there is, things are really competitive. And so, yeah, it makes it more of a pain than ever. And just to wrap it up, this is not about any particular fragrance out there right now whatsoever. It's just when I was searching up a cool water parfum, like I said, I saw that on there. And it's just always this confusion that's wrapped around discontinuations. And I don't think that's gonna go away because the brands don't make it any easier. They could just come out and say, yep, this is gone, sorry about that, have a good one. But they never do. So I just wanted to kind of give my viewpoint uh, inspired by cool water. <laughs> Thank you guys. Take it easy. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.